Hello, we are so excited to uh, continue our series on the global Pinoys, on how God is using Filipinos globally uh, in world missions. And we are so excited today that we have a very special guest, uh, Dr. Cho. He is actually uh, now the newly elected uh, General Secretary of the Korean World Missions Association, which is actually the counterpart of the Philippine Missions Association, PMA, here in the Philippines. And this is exciting because uh, Dr. Cho actually was uh, the very first missionary that was uh, requested by PMA to serve in the Philippines. And he had been here for, uh, he served for more than five years and uh, a lot, did a lot of projects and contribution uh, to the Philippine mission. So we'll hear more of that in, uh, later. But for now, uh, I would like him first to, to greet all of you. Yong Cho, General Secretary of KWMA, Korean World Missions Association. But I like to be called as a Filipino missionary to the Philippines uh, since I served the Philippines and I love the Filipinos. And wherever I go, whenever I see the Filipinos, I approached. So my sons told me, oh, dad, oh, please. <laughs> uh, that's our uh, Filipinos in my heart all the time. Well, uh, Dr. Cho actually loves Filipino food. I also love Korean food. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Dr. Cho, um, I have several questions for you today. Number one is, uh, what do you think now, because you have served in the Philippines for over five years and, and contributed significantly uh, as we started uh, the world missions uh, uh, ventures of the Philippine Church. Uh, what do you think were the accomplishments of the Philippine Church uh, in, the, in the past years in world missions? Yeah, I, I heard that at least uh, first thing, uh, inside of the Philippines, I heard that 72,000 churches, evangelical mm -hmm. churches, uh, established in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. It was a significant accomplishment mm -hmm. for the last 30 years because our goal to reach the every barangay at that time and plant the churches in every barangay, mm -hmm. but not done yet, but uh, still the significant growth of the evangelical churches. Uh, so I'm so thankful to see the Filipino church the evangelical presence is quite uh, stronger than uh, used to be. Mm -hmm. and, and also the Filipinos become more missionaries mm -hmm. uh, working uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very positive thing. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's very encouraging to actually see how churches are responding to the challenge of you know, sharing the gospel and making disciples. Mm -hmm. And that's why yeah, recently, this was just actually uh, Feb February, 2017 statistics, 72,000 Bible-believing evangelical mm -hmm. churches in the country. Mm -hmm. But of course, the challenge uh, and the new goal actually that we have is to double it. No, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Since actually this was a five-year goal that by the end of 2020, okay. from the 66,000 churches, we will see 120,000 churches. Wow. So, Amen. yeah, so we are really excited to see what God is doing. Now, uh, we, we also uh, would like to hear from you, like, say, what are the, what, what would you say would, are the significant contribution of the Korean church? Uh, particularly your ministry, we, you know, with PMA and uh, in equipping uh, churches through uh, the several seminaries that you have been involved with. Yeah, uh, when I served as a uh, missionary in the Philippines, there was during 19. 80, uh, late 80s and then early 1990s, uh, our Korean missionaries were less than 100. Mm -hmm. But now it's over 1,000 Korean mm -hmm. missionaries are working in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So a lot of uh, Korean missionaries came uh, later, uh, 1990s and 2000. And there was a lot of uh, church planting activities done by the Filipino partners and Korean missionaries. Mm -hmm. I heard the very good signs. Uh, when I started as a missionary, I was asked by PMA to do mm -hmm. the research of the unreached peoples, mm -hmm. people groups in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So we studied that unreached people uh, research, or WARAIs in Northern Samar. Mm -hmm. That was our first project. 
and I found out that time that uh, Christian that was 0.7 percent. Yeah, this was in the 80s, right? 1989. 1989. Yeah, 89. 0.7 okay. uh, percent compared to the average, the mm. lowest was 6 percent oh. of the Protestant or oh. uh, the Evangelical Christians at oh. that time. So that was the lowest uh, in the Philippines, mm. in the, among the provinces at mm. that time. So we started that work uh, for the Warai people, and we called it a Sikap. Mm. Sikap, uh, Sariling Sikap. Mm. Okay. Sikap is a Samar Integrated Community Advancement Program. Okay. That Samar integrated. The, okay. the integration was not well used uh -huh. by the time, uh -huh. and still is a very popular nowadays. No, yeah, that's right. But uh, we use that integration because it's a holistic ministry, mm -hmm. the holistic approach, not mm -hmm. only just the sharing the gospel, mm -hmm. but is transforming the whole life mm -hmm. of the Filipinos, mm -hmm. especially what I see in the Philippines. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. why we started the Sika ministry. Mm -hmm. But in Manila, I was asked to teach uh, missions. Mm -hmm. So I uh, began to teach the missions impact. Philippine Alliance College of Theology, mm -hmm. and later the Presbyterian uh, Theological Seminary. Mm -hmm. In other uh, occasions, I was teaching the missions. At the same time, you get involved in the mission mobilization. Mm -hmm. So we started that, uh, we uh, began to publish the Global Prayer Digest. Oh, okay. Do you uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. still have the yeah. Global Prayer Digest? Mm -hmm. uh, when mm -hmm. I got that uh, Global Prayer Digest from U.S. Center for World Mission, and I got the permission from the Dr. Winter uh, to publish the Filipino edition. Mm. So we included the Unreached mm. People groups mm. within the P uh, Global Prayer Digest. Mm. At the same time, we started the Dawn Prayer Meetings. Mm. Uh, Dawn Prayer Meetings, I still remember uh, our Bishop F. Dendero, mm. when he was a pastor of the Gamuning Bible Church, we started the first Dawn Prayer meeting mm. uh, by our group. Mm -hmm. and we studied together. And Bread of Life mm. also studied. Mm. And CCAC, uh, mm. CBC, and mm. all the churches, some mm. main uh, big churches started the Dawn Prayer meetings. Mm. So probably that was kind of uh, significant some contributions. Mm. And at that uh, also we started the SOS. That's, that's a short-term uh, mission program. Mm. We started called it uh, Summer Outreach to Samar. Mm, so okay. we mobilized the uh, um, uh, churches in Manila oh. to send the short-term uh, missionaries to Samar okay. for like uh, two months. Mm. Uh, we started the mm. first time as a two mm. months. And then out of that first group, uh, two uh, committed themselves to be a missionary to Samar. Mm -hmm. So the kind of the works we started and it lasts now 30 years mm -hmm. almost. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, in the 80s, uh, Samar was the least evangelized and really considered unreached then. Uh, but today we thank God that we are seeing a lot of churches there and actively uh, also engaged in planting churches and and winning people, and uh, we we believe that uh, Dr. Cho's contribution uh, was really significant uh, in terms of uh, catalyzing uh, a missions movement uh, locally. Then uh, to be able to see uh, churches planted among the unreached uh, here in the Philippines. Well, uh, actually, Dr. Cho, the 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 learnings that the Philippine Church had since that time. Uh, was actually foundational in terms of preparing the global Filipinos uh, mm -hmm. wherever, you know, because of the OFW phenomenon, overseas right. Filipino workers, mm -hmm. uh, the, rec the recent estimate is that there are now more than uh, 13, 12 to 13 okay. million Filipinos mm -hmm. living and working overseas mm -hmm. in at least 210 countries of the world. Yeah. And uh, many of them, uh, professionals, mm -hmm or not, not seminary trained, not, mm -hmm. not really yeah. uh, trained to be church planters or pastors, mm -hmm. but because they had been uh, trained to share the gospel, they had been mm -hmm. trained to, to make disciples of believers, 
they had been trained to handle uh, prayer groups and Bible study groups. Mm -hmm. So this was foundational and the skills, foundational okay. skills that they have so that now because of the scattering of the Filipinos, mm -hmm. wherever God brings them, you know, they, they also do the same. Yeah. And we thank God because it resulted to uh, uh, the missions engagements of the Filipinos. Mm -hmm. And we have seen many churches also overseas planted by the Filipinos. So the, the seed that you have really planted uh, in the Philippine church in the area of missions, uh, to your teaching in the seminary, to the research that you did with uh, among the rich peoples, uh, for me, I would really uh, say that it uh, has a strong uh, contribution and a significant contribution to the missions engagement of the Filipino church. Yeah, praise God. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, another question that I would like to ask, looking at all of this that happened, and, you know, the, the, the church is growing here, the Filipinos are being equipped, and now starting churches overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see are the potential of the Philippine church for world missions? Yeah, I, uh, when I came to the Philippines, uh, not just by teaching the missions to the Filipinos, but equipping the Filipinos to be a missionaries. 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At that time, not many people were interested in the missions. missions yeah. But I began to teach and train our the Filipinos mm -hmm. to be uh, missionaries to other mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. But we started as a domestic uh, missionaries, mm -hmm. like uh, from Manila or Tagalog mm -hmm. to Warai people. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after the training or after their four years term, and they became the missionaries to Vietnam and later Afghanistan mm. and other countries. Mm. So I think that's uh, very uh, important to uh, equip the Filipinos to be a missionary. It's not, you know, you cannot just become a missionary naturally. Mm. Uh, you need the training. Mm. Uh, you need uh, some uh, kind of whatever the kind of the mm -hmm. uh, discipleship mm -hmm. before we're going to the overseas mm -hmm. as a missionary. Mm -hmm. uh, we hear the Filipinos, uh, 12, over 12 million Filipinos who are working outside of the Philippines in so many important, unreached uh, countries. Mm -hmm. And those countries are not ac uh, accessible by many other nationalities. Mm -hmm. But only the Filipinos are accessible to even the deeper the family mm -hmm. members mm -hmm. of those countries. Mm -hmm. So I heard that from uh, the, our Korean missionaries who used to work in uh, Arabic country, mm -hmm. and he told me you know, even last week, mm -hmm. I was supported by the Filipino uh, Christians mm -hmm. and. When I was so discouraged mm -hmm. in that country, the Filipino missionaries, Filipino lay mm -hmm. missionaries, yeah. they helped me to survive. Mm -hmm. and I think that was the significant. Mm -hmm. Because the Filipinos have a lot of potential mm -hmm. to be a good missionary, mm -hmm. to be a good mission mind. If you are equipped with a mission mindedness mm -hmm. and at the same time, some resilience, mm -hmm. Uh, because a mission is really, you have to learn to be enduring mm -hmm. uh, in every situation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, not, it is very important uh, not only to send the missionaries, but also to equip them mm -hmm. and continually uh, monitoring and train and uh, uh, caring. Mm -hmm. take caring of the mission. Yeah, so yeah, there is really a need to prepare them, mm -hmm. of course, spiritually, and at least some basic skills that they, they yeah. need to be able to do ministry. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we have seen them use of the Lord. Uh, yeah, I, I was just in uh, several countries recently, and I have really seen how, uh, you know, a Filipino engineer started a church, how a flight attendant started mm -hmm. a church, how a nurse started a church, how a domestic helper started mm -hmm. a church, yeah, how a public amazing. school teacher started mm -hmm. a church. And, you know, it, it's just amazing that wherever God brings uh, Filipinos who had been trained and equipped and, and had, you know, caught the vision of world missions, 
uh, God is just using them in, in an amazing way. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, we looking at that potential. Uh, I believe we can do more uh, if there would be uh, more collaboration and partnership, right. because I believe that's what God uh, really intends the church to do uh, to work together. Uh, so true. I would like us to talk about how can we, the Korean church and the Philippine church collaborate and partner even mm -hmm. more in the future, so that we can even accomplish more uh, in the area of world missions. Yes. Uh, as for me, as individually, I have been working together with the Filipino missionaries in the different countries. Uh, those mm -hmm. who were prepared before or uh, with uh, me when I was in the Philippines. So I kept uh, uh, fellowship with uh, our uh, staff mm -hmm. in like the last 24 years. Mm -hmm. uh, but now as a general secretary of Korean World uh, missions association I'd like to do or enlarge this kind of relationship mm. the partnership uh, with the Filipino organizations mm. and Filipino uh, churches mm. especially like a PMA mm. uh, in <clears throat> sending the missionaries at the same time they're taking care of or uh, helping the missionaries to work uh, more effectively and efficiently mm. Because in, we can do in this way. When uh, the Korean missionary, our Korean missionaries are working in 172 countries, mm -hmm. we officially send uh, 27,205 missionaries mm -hmm. from Korean mm -hmm. uh, denominations and mission organizations. Mm -hmm. They are the official number. Mm -hmm. But there are more than uh, like 10,000 mm -hmm. more Korean missionaries mm -hmm. are working uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. But here, imagine these uh, 27,000, the official Korean missionaries are uh, working with the Filipinos mm -hmm. in that particular country. Mm -hmm. Here we are, it's a complementary base. Mm -hmm. Here, the Koreans are good at some certain areas, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, pioneering mm -hmm. or uh, very uh, resilient, mm -hmm. um, or some uh, little better support by the Korean churches. Mm. And here the Filipinos have a, a lot of flexibility mm. and better the linguistic skills. Mm. And Filipinos have a you know, very kind, mm. so you know, relational uh, skills. Mm. So the Korean missionaries and the Filipino missionaries can be a team mm. and can form the team and work to reach a special unreached people groups mm -hmm. in a particular country and particular situation. Uh, I think we can develop this as a more formally mm -hmm. or uh, um, informally mm -hmm. to encourage by encouraging them. Wow, this is very encouraging because mm -hmm. initially I was just thinking of the collaboration just in the Philippines. But now we can actually do it uh, globally, oh, yeah. you know, where Korean mm -hmm. missionaries are and where Filipino missionaries or tent makers are, then we can collaborate and partner. Yeah. Uh, wow, that, that, yeah. Would, that so would be exciting. Not, yeah. not only in the Philippines. Here in the Philippines, we have been working with the Filipino church, mm -hmm. but I uh, encourage our Korean missionaries to work more as you know, partnering with the Filipino church mm -hmm. and like a PMA, mm -hmm. especially in a pioneering uh, area. Mm -hmm. Because uh, here, the uh, you know, we have to assess the situation. Mm -hmm. Even yeah, yesterday when I was, had an opportunity to uh, do the seminar, lecture to the Korean missionaries, I said that we need assessment here, pioneering stage or the parental stage mm -hmm. or is a partnership stage and mm -hmm. participant stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here in the Philippines, like in Manila, it's a more partnering and even not just a partnering, but it's a participant stage. Mm -hmm. When the Filipino church asks Korean missionaries to do certain things, mm -hmm. that's the stage. But uh, like in Mindanao or some other uh, very uh, the uh, special ministries area where the Filipino churches cannot start the ministry or cannot see the need, 
Then the Korean church, uh, the missionaries, because they are missionaries to mm -hmm. see the need. So the, the Korean missionaries can start work with the PMA mm. or the other Filipino uh, groups mm. to do the pioneering uh, frontier uh, mission work. Mm -hmm. So we have to develop that, mm -hmm. develop more uh, deeper and wider partnership with the PMA and Korean missionaries in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But it's not only in the Philippines, but it's a global mission, mm -hmm. it's a widely open. Yeah. Because as you know, the Western missionaries have a very difficult times these days to uh, be to go to a certain uh, very del uh, delicate de uh, countries. Mm. So they are asking the non-Western missionaries mm. to kind of uh, take over or to work with them. So it's a very important, to, like a Korean missionaries and Filipino missionaries mm -hmm. and Chinese missionaries uh, from the churches work together as a global team. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. it's a potential. Yeah. So I hear we can really see there the great potential, and yeah. we would like to explore more of this mm -hmm. so that we can really <clears throat> see the Great Commission completed yes. uh, even in our generation. Amen. So do you have some other? parting words that you would like to share or maybe uh, encourage uh, those who are watching us? Mm. Yeah, I'm so thankful for the, the Filipino brothers and sisters in the Lord. And especially, I always emphasize that Filipinos have a, a lot, a lot of potential in the Lord. And, and I used to say that Filipinos have a, a more potential than Koreans, because the Koreans, we were trained in a monocultural uh, society and monolinguist <laughs> society, monolingual. Yes, the Koreans have a difficult time to learn the other languages. But here the Filipinos, they, you are the multilingual uh, culture and uh, all the backgrounds have uh, prepared these Filipinos to be a very flexible the missionary candidate already. So. Uh, here we have the strengths and weaknesses, everyone. So we want to this uh, work together as a complement each other right. so that we can uh, make this global team uh, to uh, accomplish the great commission in our generation. That should be our goal. It's not just expand our uh, organization, or our even denomination, or even the Korean uh, influence. It, is, it shouldn't be. But we have to dream this, our kingdom-mindedness mission. Kingdom mission should be the glory of God uh, over all the countries mm -hmm. can be done by the partnership with Filipino brothers and sisters and the Korean uh, brothers and sisters, and not only but us, but all over the country, uh, all over the world. Here we can develop very significant partnership to see that significant growth impact on world missions. I'm so thankful for this opportunity to speak. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Cho. And uh, yeah, just like uh, what we have discussed, we have really seen the potential of the Philippine church and we thank God for the investments of the Korean church in the Philippines in the area of missions uh, so that we are able to accomplish more for the Lord. And this is our dream that by 2020, by the end of 2020, we will see 120,000 Bible-believing evangelical churches in the Philippines and these are churches uh, uh, not just for... Uh, the Filipinos, but all the UPGs that are from other countries that are here, we are also committed to see churches planted among them. And of course, as Filipinos are scattered all over the world, we also envision to see that the global Filipinos, wherever God brings them, will continually evangelize, they will continually uh, make disciples, uh, catalyze a disciple-making movement 
that will result in church planting movements, especially among the unreached peoples. We just want to see the Great Commission completed in our generation and see Matthew 24, 14 be realized. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, to all people group, to all ethnic group, to all tribal groups. And then Jesus Christ will come again. So we'd like to thank once again Dr. Cho, uh, Korean World Missions Association. And uh, in partnership with the Philippine Missions Association, we can work together and see the Great Commission completed in our generation. God bless you.